Yeah, obviously Simon Cowell is a big household name. Um, a lot of us know Simon Cowell. You know, he's been immortalised in animation. He's been in Shrek, like, uh, you know, in the ending credits of Shrek. You know, so there's a lot of people that know Simon Cowell. What was he like as a person? Like, did he treat you well? Like, did you have a good relationship? He is a gentleman. He is lovely. He is very pleasant. Yeah. Very nice guy. Wicked. Very wicked. nice. Have you, got any, have you got any stories, any embarrassing stories? Did he do anything like... No, not at <laughs> all. No, no. <laughs> he, when he arrives at, at the studio, he talks to people. He talks to anyone. That's says hello to everybody. He's very Down nice. Very nice. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, it's so not like... Up his nose. No, no. Down to earth, really nice. That's good, man. Like, what's that experience like? Was it intimidating, like, when you were on stage, though? Like, because I imagine he's a different person. No, no. Oh, he's a completely the same person. Like... No, no, I never felt intimidated. Right, no. right, right. No. So, well, other, other people would, though, like, Simon Cowell, it's like a, it's like a presence who's like, well, like, you know, like, big Sony boss sitting there, can, you know. With, and, and, and another thing, but did you feel like you needed to impress him? Like, when you're on stage... And you I were needed to impress everybody, didn't it? The four yeah. judges when I went, so I needed four yeses. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing as well. The four yeses as well. So, so criticism. How did you handle any criticism when you were there as well? I mean, I I can see how you handled it very very well, you know. But how did you feel in yourself when they were, you know, if they had anything bad to say about your performance on the night? You know, what? How did it make you feel? And what was what was your aim the next week when you were coming out after you've taken criticism from any of the judges? Did you feel, you know, I could take it on the chin, come back out, come back fighting, it's my dream, it's what I want to do. Like, how did you bring yourself back up to the level of being like, you know, that was Simon Cowell who said that, but I'm still going to go back at it, you know. Like, how, how did you feel, like, in that time when, you know? Simon actually didn't crucify me much. Uh, he would say funny comments about my, my performances. It was more... Uh, Daniel Shadow that were more ruthless and yeah. they said they didn't like my performance all the time they said it is, it is a bit disappointing but it's got it's to be comforting to know it, that you've it, won it, over Simon Cowell like, it is a bit disappointing but yeah. it made no sense to me how how the judges were some of them were not being nice to me but yeah. the public was so I think hold on a second What's going on here? Because everyone seems to like my performance. I don't like my performances. I mean, that's that's. I think they are awful, but people love them. Yeah. What I can mean, I do? People have like the criticism. So I, I have to agree with the judges. I don't like my performances. Really? Okay. Either. See, but see, I don't know why people love them. Yeah, it's because you know, as I said earlier, it's it's not, you know, just singing ability. It's that entertainment value, and this is why you redefine the X factor, and this is why you started a trend especially with the, the breach of YouTube and YouTube then starting to grow, you started a trend without knowing it, right? So I believe that you started the trend of now how gamers are now selling their joy and their passion as opposed to just their skills, you know? Because like, they, like you know, as I said, you were on stage with One Direction, who we'll get into in a minute, and we'll talk about One Direction in a minute as well. You were on stage more or less competing with these guys, but you didn't come from a competing stand for like you wasn't in the sort of <clears throat> we're going to beat these guys every day you came out you were like you know what i'm going to perform better than i did or i'm going to make people smile i'm going to make more people smile every time i come out and i saw that on you as well watching the x factor back you know i was 20 years old at the time uh, when you were on the x factor but watching it back now being an older man i fully understand what you were doing and you may not even know what you were doing yourself like when you oh. were doing that like you know you, you your perseverance determination and your enthusiasm for what you wanted to do is what we loved because then it gives other people permission you know what i'm gonna give it a try as well or mm. you know and you love to you always love to watch people that are doing what you want to do right so that's what made you shine as well and you started that trend and then, you know, in 2010, as I said, that's when PewDiePie uh, started with his YouTube career. And I think you started that before PewDiePie began to start that. You were in a space where you were doing what you loved, facing the criticism and still moving forward, you know. So to me, you were the first PewDiePie. You, you know, although you wasn't playing games, you were the first PewDiePie. Uh, thank you. My attitude, attitude there was... 
I'm happy to be here. I will not win this. Yeah. I want Rebecca Ferguson to win. Yes, yeah, Rebecca Ferguson. Oh, I, I, but yeah. I love her voice. Yeah. I must say, Leona Lewis has the most amazing control and technique and yeah. sound yeah. in her voice. But Rebecca has a very special voice. Yeah. When she sings uh, Wicked Game, you need, you need to watch that. Watch Rebecca Ferguson singing Wicked Game. It is mesmerizing. Yeah. So I wanted Rebecca to win, and uh, I just wanted to have opportunity in show business. I didn't. I didn't want to win. Yeah. But many of them in my year, they wanted to win, and I was thinking, you don't need to win this. Yeah. You've got. You just a need to be part of it, and and see, you know, and, and it should be all right. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you've got that platform, and once you've been given that platform, you can then mm -hmm. use that, you know, to reach out to who you want to reach out to. Like you could literally. You know, be on stage and give somebody a birthday shout out, which is what you're doing now. Yeah. We're going to get into what Wagner's doing in a minute. Um, but before we get to that stage, another thing that I want to talk to you about, about the X Factor, we're wrapping up the X Factor story a little bit now, is I wanted to talk about um, the rehearsal process, because you did say that you um, was forgetting lyrics and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. as well. Is there anything that you took from rehearsals or that Louis Walsh gave you that you took from rehearsals into your performances now and your gigs now and what people get from you now when the, you know you're appearing for these gigs and doing these videos you know I already know that you've taken you know the experience itself as confidence wise you know I can't imagine you being nervous in front of anyone now after doing the X Factor yeah, no, yeah exactly yeah, like you know um, and plus as well because of your performances I do believe it sparked an interest in Simon's mind to then take it to a third dimension and not just singing which is where Britain's Got Talent came from, mm. right? So um, I do believe you were the catalyst that got that thought into Simon Cowell's head of this is entertainment, this isn't just singing. The X factor is about entertainment, not just a singing ability. Um, so is there anything that you took from your rehearsals into uh, your gigs and, and the things that you're doing today? public appearances and, and things like because as I said it can be very nerve wracking as well doing public appearances and things like that so it's a lot to handle as well for somebody who is a beginner performer you're not a beginner performer mm. but you know advice for those beginner performers out there or even somebody on YouTube who, who you know you get and start on YouTube you're in front of a camera you know um, rehearsals are important so yeah really really want to know like if, is there, if there's anything you took from rehearsals you know, into the you know your day in life and the I, way you do things. You know? I particularly don't think uh, they give us much time to rehearse. Right. We have some rehearsals, but we spend most of the time hanging around to do filming, all kinds of activities. Because it is going a reality to places, show. As well, isn't going it? to places and being filmed. And always, you know, always doing something. Yeah. And uh, I don't think we 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 rehearsed uh, as much as we should. Right. But having said that, that is only my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Leona Lewis performed brilliantly every single time. She's amazing. And so did Leona Alexander Lewis. Burke. Yeah. And uh, Rebecca Ferguson and so many yes. others. Yes. But uh, I thought that we could do a bit more, with a bit more rehearsal, I thought. Yeah. Especially because I didn't know the songs. And I, ne <laughs> I had never paid attention to any of them. <laughs> but what I took from it is, well, the experience I had singing to millions of people was brilliant. And then later on the tour, uh, when I went on the O2, in London, yeah, there were there were twenty two thousand people in the audience. So you look that way, you wow. see people. You look up there, there's people. Up there, there is people. Yeah, everywhere you see people. It's fantastic. So that experience uh, makes you really perform anywhere with. Uh, Feeling, feeling at home yeah. on stage. You okay. 
this is like you're, you're, yeah. you're comfortable being on stage now because yeah. you can't really get any higher than that like when you when you're performing unless you you know what's next is Madison Square Garden like <laughs> you know like uh.